Today, we discuss properties of symmetric groups. Let's first recall some ideas that we had in a previous lesson about permutations. Given a function, f, that is a well-defined map, we have the idea of an injectivity or a monomorphism. The idea is that if x1 is different from x2 in the domain x, then we want f of x1 to be different from f of x2 in the codomain y. This is equivalent to saying that our function has a left inverse, which we denote here by g. Similarly, we have the idea of a surjection, which we can also call an epimorphism. The idea is that if we're given a lowercase y in the codomain capital Y, there should exist a lowercase x in the domain uppercase x, such that y equals f of x. This is equivalent to saying that f has a right inverse, which we denote here by a function h. Now we can put both of these together to say that we have a two-sided inverse. We say that a function is bijective if it is both an injection and a surjection. We also call this a bimorphism. Here we'd like to make sure that we have a function g such that g compose f is the identity on the domain x and f compose g is the identity on the codomain y. Here we use f to the minus 1 to denote this two-sided inverse g and we call this the inverse of our function f. A permutation of a set x is simply a bijection from x to itself. That is, is the collection of all functions that have a two-sided inverse. We'll denote S sub x as the collection of all such permutations. We found in a previous lesson that the identity map, that is the function that sends lowercase x to itself, is an example of a permutation. If sigma and tau are two permutations on our set x, then the composition is also permutation. In fact, we can actually compute what its two-sided inverse is. The two-sided inverse of sigma composed tau is simply tau inverse composed sigma inverse. Now we can use this to form a group. Again, let S sub x denote the set of permutations from x to itself. And remember that circle here is the composition of two functions. Well, the statement is that this pair, S sub x, as well as the composition, forms a group. Moreover, if x only has a finite number of elements, perhaps say n elements, then s sub x, the set of permutations, is also a finite set. In fact, it is a finite group that has n factorial elements. We'll give this a name. If x is a non-empty set and s sub x is the set of permutations, then the pair we just mentioned s sub x along with the composition is called the symmetric group on x. In particular, if x consists of the numbers 1, 2 through n, then its symmetric group is simply denoted by s sub n and it is called the symmetric group of degree n. Let's give an example of this. Let's say that our set x consists of just three elements, which we'll denote here by a, b, and c. We know from the previous proposition that S sub x, the set of permutations, has three factorial or six elements. So there are six permutations. We can draw all of this out in a diagram. Here you'll see at the very top, we have our elements A, B, and C. And as we go from top to bottom, there are different ways in which we could swap around the elements A, B, and C into various configurations. Let's try to take a look at these arrows in a bit more detail. If you follow the arrows at the very left, then you'll see here that our permutation simply leaves A, B, and C invariant. As we move from left to right, we'll see that things change just a little bit. Here, for example, A is left fixed, but B and C get interchanged. For the next example, you'll see here that C is fixed, but A and B now become interchanged. Here now, all three symbols, A, B, and C, get permuted around. A gets swapped for B, B gets swapped for C, and C gets swapped for A. Here, we find something similar 
but is slightly reversed. A gets swapped for C, B is left invariant, C gets swapped for A. And finally, we see here that A gets swapped for C, B gets swapped for A, and C gets swapped for B. Here are the six permutations on these three letters. Now, of course, this is cumbersome to write all of this out every single time we want to discuss a permutation. So is there shorthand notation that we could use for such permutations? Let's go back and take a look at that example again. Remember that we had six permutations. The first one left A, B, and C invariant. The second one interchanged B and C. The third interchanged A and B. The fourth swapped around A, B, and C in a cyclical pattern. The fifth left B invariant but swapped A and C. And the sixth moved around A, B, and C in a cyclical pattern. So let's see if we can come up with some notation that keeps track of all of this. Let's think of maybe in the first case, sigma in this way here. Notice that the parentheses around the letters denote that A is fixed, B is fixed, and C is fixed. In the next case here, you'll see that A is fixed, but B and C get interchanged. The way to read this notation is B gets swapped for C, and conversely, C gets swapped for B. In the next case here, you'll see that C remains fixed, but A and B are interchanged. Example four here is perhaps the most interesting one. You'll see here that sigma of A is B, sigma of B is C, and sigma of C is A. That's what the notation here on the right represents. A becomes B, B becomes C, and C wraps back around to become A. In the fifth example, you'll see here that B remains fixed while A and C become interchanged. And in the last example, you'll see that we have a cyclical interchange, but in the opposite direction from before. Here, A becomes C, C becomes B, and B becomes A. This will introduce the idea of cycle notation, which will make rigorous now. We'll introduce an algorithm to represent any cycle using just a string of integers. For now, just to keep things simple, let's assume that our set X is simply the set consisting of the first n positive integers, and let's just choose a permutation from this symmetric group. First, let's pick the smallest integer between 1 and n that has not yet appeared in any previous cycle, and we'll start off the cycle by writing a parentheses and this positive integer A. Second, Let's read off where A goes under sigma, call that integer B. If B is different from A, then we'll simply write B next to A and continue on to the next step. If B equals A, then we'll just write a parentheses after A and go back to step one and take a look at the next integer that doesn't appear. For step three, we'll read off where sigma sends B. Let's call that C. If C is different from A, then we'll write C next to B, as in this cycle, parentheses A, B, and C. And we'll continue on to the next step. Otherwise, we'll simply close off the cycle and return back to step number one. And the idea is that we'll continue in this fashion until we found all of the integers, one through n, and place them at some point inside of our notation. It might be best to illustrate this with an example, which we do now. Let's choose n is equal to 13, and let's consider a certain permutation from its corresponding symmetric group. Let's consider this rather strange permutation here. You'll notice that we have this cumbersome notation of simply writing out where all of the integers, 1 through 13, get sent under this permutation sigma. We'll try to write off the following notation now. According to the algorithm, we'll start by writing a parentheses to start off the notation. Now, we haven't had any numbers appear yet, so we'll start with the number 1. 1, you'll see, goes to the number 12. So according to the algorithm, we'll put 12 in the cycle notation next to the number 1. 12 now goes to the number 8. 8 is different from the number 1, 
So we'll list the number 8 and move on. Sigma now takes 8 to the number 10. 10 doesn't appear anywhere else in this list, so we'll write down the number 10 and move on. Sigma sends 10 to 4. 4 doesn't appear, so we'll write down the number 4 and move on. Sigma sends 4 back to 1. So according to the algorithm, we have to close out the parentheses and start all over again. Now we have to ask, what's the next number that doesn't appear in this list? You'll see that 1 appears, but the number 2 does not. So let's write down the number 2 and continue on. Sigma sends 2 to the number 13. 13 is different from 2, so we'll write that down and continue. However, sigma sends 13 back to 2. So according to the algorithm, we'll close out the parentheses and then move on to the next number. We see here, by looking at all of the numbers, that the number 3 does not yet appear. So we'll write down 3 and ask where sigma sends that integer. Well, sigma sends 3 to 3. So according to the algorithm, we'll close out the parentheses and move on to the next integer. Well, 1 has already appeared, 2 has appeared, 3 has appeared, actually 4 has already appeared. So the number 5 is the smallest integer that has not yet appeared. Here, sigma sends 5 to 11. 11 is sent to 7. 7 is sent back to 5. So we'll close out the parentheses and start again. Now, the smallest integer that has not yet appeared is the number 6. Sigma sends 6 to 9, and 9 is sent back to the number 6. But we found all of the numbers 1 through 13, so now we found the cycle notation for this permutation. Notice that it's much, much simpler to write this element sigma than it is to write out which sigma sends all of these 13 integers as above. You can see here that we can always express a permutation in this form where we have a product of various cycles. And each cycle, as we look through all the integers, actually are just a rearrangement of the numbers 1 through n. Typically, we don't list the 1 cycles that is, the places where we just have a parentheses containing just one element because they denote the fixed points of the permutation. The length of a cycle is the number of integers which appear in it. As an example, we can take a look at what we worked out previously. If you see the first set of numbers, 1, 12, 8, 10, 4, there are five of them. That means that that first set of parentheses is what we call a five cycle. As you look at this next set of parentheses, let's say the 213, that will be a 2 cycle. The 3 by itself is a 1 cycle. The 5, 11, 7 is a 3 cycle. And the 6, 9 is a 2 cycle. But how does cycle notation behave under composition? Remember that we're dealing with a group. So how do we perhaps compute products? And how do we compute inverses? Remember that composition is always read from right to left, so the same is true of cycle notation. Let's work through an example. Let's consider the case when n is equal to 3, and let's consider these two cycles here, 1, 2, and 1, 3. Let's first ask, what happens with sigma compose tau? Well, I claim that this takes the number 1 to the number 3. Here's the reason why. First tau takes 1 to 3, and then sigma leaves 3 invariant. So the composition of those sends 1 to 3. Next, I claim that this composition sends 3 to 2. Well, tau sends 3 to 1, and sigma sends 1 to 2. Therefore, the composition sends 3 to 2. In this fashion, we'll see that this composition, sigma circle tau, it's the same as the 3 cycle, 1, 3, 2. But you'll notice that this is very different from going in the opposite direction, namely tau composed with sigma. For example, 3, in this case, goes to 1, whereas before, 3 went to 2. The reason being, sigma first leaves 3 invariant, so sigma sends 3 to 3. 
However, tau sends three to one, so the composition, tau circle sigma, sends three to one. In this fashion, you'll see that tau circle sigma is the three cycle one, two, three. Again, you want to be very careful as to the order here, remembering that we always read going from right to left. Inverses, on the other hand, are actually very easy to compute. If you have, for example, an M cycle, then its inverse is simply the cycle that you get by reversing the order of the numbers. Here's an example. Let's let n is equal to 13, and let's consider the following cycle that we worked out before. Here you see we have a five cycle times a two cycle times a three cycle times a two cycle. According to this statement, we simply have to reverse the order everywhere. So if we start at the very end, namely the six nine, we'll just read going from right to left. So we have the two cycle nine six, then we have the three cycle seven eleven five, then we have the two cycle thirteen two, and then we have the five cycle. 4, 10, 8, 12, 1. Remember that we can always ignore the one cycle, namely the parentheses with the number 3, because it's just a fixed point of the permutation. Again, please note how the order of the cycles gets reversed. Thanks for watching.